My name is Samuel Leo Arch, and we're here in the district of French Key, Ruata and Bay Islands. My name is Sherman Arch. My name is uh, Sherman Arch. We're located at Iguana Park on the island of Roatan in the dis district of French Key. And my grandfather, Henry Arch, migrated from England. And uh, my dad and my mom were born here on the island. My great-grandfather, um, Oliver Jackson, was from South Carolina in the United States of America. My dad was boat builder. He, that was his way of living. But he also did a little fishing. Uh, but over the latter years, my brother and I, uh, we took on uh, mostly fishing for a living. We do uh, boat building also. Well, me and my dad have a really close relationship, and I think it's a very good thing he started here preserving on the island. I think it's one of the only places in the island you can come and you can feed iguana out of your hand. Well, I think if we hadn't had done it, there won't be an iguana left here on the island. There would be, but it will be hard to find. I have been protecting the iguana now for 32 years, and three and a half years ago, we started a marine park here in French Key District to try to preserve and to save the wildlife of our reef and our harbors here. We're now working a lot with the lobster and the count and the, the fish around our coral reef here in the district of French Key. Well, he started out just by stopping them and stuff from taking out the lobster and the conch and after a couple of months of, of just by doing it, he saw such a, a big change. All, everything was starting to come back so he just went around and started talking to people and making them agree with what he was trying to do and help them and they did it and this is what we have here today. We have lobster in abundance, we have conch in abundance, and we have so much more sea life that, that we didn't have years ago, but we have it now. And thanks to the help of a lot of the guys here in French Key, and our area where we live, the, anytime any divers or any canoes or anything is coming up this way, they let us know, you know, and I want to thank those guys for being here to help us also because they're helping, helping it also to be one step ahead. Well, years ago before we started this, you couldn't hardly find a conch or a lobster out there or see any fish. And if you did see them, they made sure they got out of your way before you got to them. Well, you see a lot of Caribbean spiny lobsters, a lot of tropical fish that you didn't normally see in the shallow waters because they were fished out. Um, you see a lot of conch and just a lot of sea life that we had years ago which is slowly coming back thanks to the help of all of the members that cooperate with us and stuff and help us to protect this. Those conks there, I figured they were killed in between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning time. That's, most, that's normally the hours that we don't be out there so that's, norm, that's probably when it happened you know. Out there the water is so shallow that you don't need to dive down or anything. You can go there without a mask and that's how the people do it. They don't even need a light there because you can walk and keep walking and you stand up on him. Once he stands up on a conch, you just pick him up and put him in his canoe. Once he figures he's, he has enough, he goes in one, one spot and he anchors off there. That's where he pops them and he cleans them and he throws the, that dumps the shells there. That's why there was that one pile right in that one particular area. Right now with the protection we're up a lot big step ahead because around this time of when we did not have the protection you could not find any conch or any lobster at all in this area and around this time in the day you would find dozens of dories and guys just diving you know trying to find something to take and now that we have it protected um, it's a lot better and a lot more nice. I always had a belief in protecting the wildlife but as a boy growing up here, sure, I did take lobsters, I did take conchs, I took fish for eating now. Well, our island, you know, it's not like it used to be many years ago. We didn't have that big volume of people on it, and people hunted for a living, but that was about it. When I was a little boy, it was maybe 50 to 55,000 people. And about a year and a half ago now, since they did an estimate on the island, there was approximately 95,000 people. 
the population has been growing because of the cruise ships and stuff that have been coming and when you get cruise ships and stuff and you get a lot of tourists and tourism brings in a lot of money so a lot of these people come over from the mainland and they they don't know when they come here what they're going to find so some of them find a job or two and they can't make it off of that so they find some other means to get some money so they rely either on the fishing or the poaching and that's that's the poaching is the number one th one that they go to and we also have islanders that do a lot of killing too but mostly it's immigrants from mainland honduras coming here and they just kill all the babies they, they don't leave nothing if they find a female lobster with spawn on it they don't have no respect for it they kill it the conks they're killing the baby conks everywhere and this is causing a serious problem for the island. Even the little fish around the reef that protect our reef and keep it clean are becoming extinct. The last 25 to 30 years, the, the fish, the, the conch, the lobster, the turtles, even the sharks and other species of fish around the coral reef have been fastly becoming extinct. And I think now it's time that the island people in particular are stand together and try to preserve the island for future generations. I really don't think that we can we can survive in the reef and other uh, the animals that are native here to the island and stuff. We won't be able to see them if we don't start protecting them. If they keep on coming in the way they're coming in. Because the, the island is too small for such an amount of people on it. Places where I used to snorkel a lot. We had a lot of wildlife here, man. It was beautiful to see the coral reef in abundance, you know, with wildlife. Three and a half years ago, almost now, I asked the Marine Park if I could volunteer to work with them, because I would like, in particular, to protect my neighborhood, because I think it's of vital importance to the island here. It's a beautiful place, and we have been doing real well. I had family of mine that used to kill lobster and conch to sell and now they have joined me in protecting the wildlife here in the district of French Key. Around here we basically got a, what you'd call a 24 hour watch uh, but normally my biggest problem is at night time anything after 7 o'clock till about 2 o'clock in the morning. Well me and my brother we have a good relationship there and we do our best to help my father out as anyhow we can and especially out in the harbor here patrolling and stuff and sometimes I get a little concerned when he goes out there alone you know because I don't like him going out alone sometimes I'll do my best to go out there with him if not my brother would go with him and it's kind of hard you know to stick to stay awake all night sometimes until morning when you got to work next day that's kind of hard to do I tell you what after what I've been seeing with these guys, man, these two boys of mine in particular, uh, how they go out at night and daytime and help me keep the poacher the way it had been, like a miracle for me, you know? And it makes me proud of them to be able to help to work with me. And I do my best to see that they're taken care of and, and not to get in harm's way at any time, you know? Waking up at the night time and going out there, it's kind of hard, you know, and on your way out there you're thinking what are these guys doing or are they going to try and hurt you you know that's something that goes through your mind but I mean it's a very strong commitment and I'm going to keep it up as long as I can. We have had a lot of threats over the last two years in particular we go out there and some guys want to get a little rough they want to hurt you but we stand our ground you know and sometimes we get a little too hot I just call the cops and they take care of the problem for me. Last two years now my family and my friends and everybody now have joined me and it had re really really made a difference for me I'm able to get a little more rest than I used to have and um, man, they're really involved in it anytime they see a canoe or a boat or out there or something suspicious they're always on them so it's really come a long way and I'm happy for each and everyone that will join me in protecting our reef here. I got Guys that, if they see I'm headed this way, they will call me up. I have guys in French Harbor, I got guys in French Key. We are getting a lot of support. Like any time that there's somebody that's coming out, like from, it could be from anywhere, that he's getting ready to come out and poach. We have somebody that's going to call us on the phone and let us know when they're coming and, and what they're wearing and what canoe or what boat they're in. Those guys, they really help us a lot because if 
we didn't if we didn't have those guys on our side and we were up at Oak Ridge the guys could come and they could take anything they want but thanks to the guys that help us we have a lot more help and it's making a big difference we had a fairly good day today you know we managed to catch up with one canoe we had eight counts on board so far but what we do, we normally when we catch these guys for the first time, we give them a chance. We take their uh, mask and fins and we, uh, we release all of the uh, conks and lobster or whatever they may have in their canoe at the present time. And now the second time then we, uh, we turn it in to the police and normally we uh, give them a 24 hour jail sentence. And, uh, so I think we had a fairly good day today. We managed to save some conks by being able to capture these guys and a lot of people they just love the fact like we had a guy Mr. Irvin Dixon that hadn't been in the water for over 20 years and what we have now is what he saw when he was a kid and he couldn't believe his eyes that over two to three years are just protecting this little area that it could come back the way it was when he was a kid growing up and he just wished we could continue on doing it and which we're going to keep on doing that water there is about the most four feet. In some areas it could be five. That was kind of surprising to see them eating out of your hand, you know. Not too often you can do that with a spiny lobster around here. Normally when, he, when the lobster sees you the first time, he would go straight up in the rock hole and he won't see him again. But that guy was cool. He came right out and he was eating out of my hand. The problem is with, with the marine park here on the island, we need some funds to get this thing going in a proper manner and I think if we had the right system Rotan will be a paradise once again for the marine life because if we lose our marine life around the reef here we're going to lose our reef and that's what got me a little concerned about all of this you know. If a lot more people were to step in and help us this could be a beautiful place to come Someday some tourists are going to want to go out there and snorkel. You don't know and someday that's going to bring jobs to some of the island people which are killing the conch and the lobsters that do not understand that. And I think it's a very good thing we have going on here. If we give it anywhere from three to five years, we can see a vast change in the ocean. I know because of working here three and a half years now, it has made a world of difference. When we started this, there were no conks to be seen, no lobster, the little reef fish were gone. And now everywhere we go, there's conks, there's lobster, then there's reef fish again. In the long run, the effort's gonna be worth it, but we're gonna make a lot of enemies and we're gonna make a lot of new friends. We're gonna keep up with the marine park here in French Key as long as we possibly can. And hopefully one day it'll turn into a big tourist site one day. Protecting and preserving in a way at the first start you don't see much of it but if you continue it for two or three years that's when you begin to see a big difference and that's when you, be began, you, you, begun, you began to think you know what I did was not in vain. I want to thank each and every person I don't care where you're from United States Russia, Germany, it don't make no difference whichever country you're from. I'm very, very happy when you can come here and be a part of it. And each and every person that go there, I consider they're a part of it too, not only me and my family here. And I thank each one for their support. <laughs>